If you're a millennial doing magic, chances are you used, have or at least heard of Donald Michael Craig's Modern Magic. Commonly recommended as the go to for beginners, the book is one of the best sold in the occult genre close to regard as the Golden Dawn. Starting with the author's story and how its material got updated, Modern Magic mainly uses the Golden Dawn system, though it also incorporates Wicca and particular Eastern practices. Unlike others on the same thematic, the book is extremely easy and pleasant to read, having a tone similar to some self-help bestsellers. Close to 500 pages, it is very eclectic, packing tons of material. Since summarizing it all would be lengthy and unreasonable, I'll focus this review on what I enjoyed and didn't enjoy the most after having it for 5 years. Before starting, let me mention that like those on self-help, often magical books recommend discipline as a great virtue but seldom elaborate on what that means and where it comes from. For this, I dedicated 8 months of my life to researching, writing, editing and formatting my second book, Discipline or Something Else, understanding the mechanics of self-discipline and the forces behind it. Like Omad Games, the book is available on Amazon and I firmly believe you'll find it quite valuable if struggling with self-discipline and or enjoying my content. And if the second is true, please subscribe to my channels and maybe consider making a small donation using the PayPal link in the description. Thank you in advance. Magical Powers Right from its start, Modern Magic teaches two fundamental lessons. Quote, no one can give you magical powers, you have to earn them, there is only one way to do this. Practice, practice, practice. End quote. An identical notion is also emphasized in regard is the one year manual. It essentially means that the only way to increase proficiency in magic isn't by striving to buy and read all available books, but by gaining first hand experiences through your practice. And the more, the better. Real magic. Modern magic separates the fictitious movie and fairy tale magic from the actual real life practices. It also notes that the actually working magic seldom does that immediately and instead its effects kick in gradually, saturating your life with changes. Page 7. Quote, the key difference between the magic in fairy tales and movies and magic as practiced by tens of thousands of people around the world today and in the past is that most real magic does not occur instantaneously. As an example, if you work the ritual to bring you money, it may take a week or two for the money to arrive. When it does arrive, it would come only by natural means, but if you practice and properly perform your ritual, come it must. Unquote. Changes. There are several reasons why fully comprehending this is so crucial. One is that it relieves you from the ridiculous expectancy of something paranormal happening. I also believe this filters out the kind of person who gets into magic hoping to bring excitement to their life by experiencing something of that nature. Freed from that, you can focus on the bigger picture, examining the subtle arrangements in your life. The second is that whatever change occurs, it will always be under the walls of our physical reality, Malkut, having a reasonable and logical explication. Hence, there likely won't be any spoon bending or objects moving in your room. In the example Modern Magic provides, that could be the money manifesting as you're applying for a job interview, eventually being approved and getting the opportunity to have a good salary, or by receiving some inheritance in a perfectly legitimate manner. I believe this also hints at the speed and power with which the effects of elemental, planetary and zodiacal magic kick in. According to many sources, the first is the weakest, but also the fastest. The second is somewhere in the middle, and the third takes longer to manifest, but has the greatest potency. Becoming a magician. Continuing to facilitate your outlook in the right direction, modern magic brings another critical to know from the very start. Page 88, quote, Magic isn't something you do, magic is something you are, unquote. Elaborating on that, Donald Michael Craig explains that once you step on the path, everything starts feeling related magically, and thus you begin seeing the world from a different perspective. Being a magician starts with letting the magic permeate your entire being, adopting the quote-unquote magical mindset. Quote, when magic becomes your way of thinking, acting and breathing, then and only then you will be a true magician. Unquote. Stressing that magic is an empirical science, modern magic explains that this is precisely how to approach your workings. Quote, magic, real magic is an experimental science. One of the first things a scientist learns is to keep a record of his or her work. It is important to keep a record of your practices, experiences, thoughts and dreams. This should be done in two separate journals or diaries." Unquote. Journaling While the instructions on ritual journaling are pretty standard, modern magic provides a pro tip on how to remember dreams. That's commanding your mind by declaring it is your choice to memorize them right before falling asleep. 
Truth be told, I found this quite indispensable in the early stages of my practice. On the other hand, the less I needed it as my workings progressed and now I actually have difficulties not remembering my dreams. All this doesn't mean getting sucked at memorizing correspondences and collecting books or not having wife besides practicing and journaling. It rather implies adopting the magical mindset so you can become your absolute best in all aspects of your life. And this I think is very well clarified in one my would catch forward of the book. Quote, if there were to give the novice magician one piece of advice at the beginning of his or her career, it would be study and practice magic, but please have a wife. Unquote. What is magic? Introducing the student to magic via Crowley's and Yon Fortune's definitions, Craig brings additional clarity by outlining his quote, Magic is the science and art of causing change in the consciousness to occur in conformity with will, using means not currently understood by traditional science. Besides this, modern magic also distinguishes three types of magic. Quote, White magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will using means not currently understood by traditional western science for the purpose of obtaining knowledge and conversation of your holy guardian angel." Unquote. Using yoga to exemplify white magic, Craig explains that mysticism is the yoga of the west, kinda like Dion Fortune and Kabbalah. Unlike organizations like, for instance, the Temple of Set, modern magic defines black magic as the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will, using means not currently understood by traditional Western science for the purpose of causing either a physical or non-physical harm to yourself or others, and is done either consciously or unconsciously. Unquote. Quote, Grey magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will, using means not currently understood by traditional Western science for the purpose of causing either a physical or non-physical good to yourself or others, and it's done either consciously or unconsciously. Unquote. Modern magic defines all its practices as grey magic, improving the quality of life of you and your loved ones while increasing awareness of your holy guardian angel's presence and guidance. It also stresses to not use black magic since there's a law of karma. Grey magic, Craig explains, has its basis in creating things on the astral plane, and this, as later explained, should always be preceded by divination. Taro. Also from its beginning, modern magic introduces the student to the Taro's enormous significance in magic. Examining some classic decks, the book recommends the Golden Dawn, the BOTA, and the Hermetic Tarot decks as the best suitable for its material. It also defines the classic rider weight as acceptable due to some omissions it has and the tot tarot as inappropriate since it's unconventional and more complex. Warning the tarot, Donald Michael Craig explains, requires using it daily while employing correspondences as a language to translate your readings. Page 28, quote, Try memorizing the meanings of the cards one per day. Also try giving yourself small readings on a daily basis. However, also don't count on the accurateness for at least a month. You are probably not too accurate when you first learned to ride a bicycle or drive a car, but as you practiced and became experienced, success in a bike riding and driving wasn't only assured, it became part of you, and those skills became second nature to you." Unquote. Unlike others presenting the traditional Celtic cross, modern magic recommends the tarot hexagram split, which I find pretty handy. It also has McGregor Matter's meanings of the major arcana, which I believe are derived from regard is the golden dawn. Meditation. Early in its lessons, modern magic distinguishes true meditation from new age practices explaining how essential meditating is on the magical path. Quote, in true meditation, the goal is to silence the inner voice. Unquote. This means remaining fully alert while switching off your day-to-day -day eye so your deeper consciousness can kick in. Rather than boring you to death by recommending to think of nothing or to clear your mind, modern magic offers a technique inspired by the traditional Tatva vision. That's contemplating a card, scanning its artwork thoroughly and then reproducing and erasing it within your mind. Kabbalistic Correspondences Having a Jewish background, Donald Michael Craig provides a great introduction to the divisions and roots of Kabbalah and, of course, Etzkaim, revealing how the parts of the soul in Kabbalah correspond to the Freudian, Jungian and even some Eastern systems. Modern magic includes tables of attributions and also explains how the 22 major arcana map to the three spots. Like some books by the Ciceros, modern magic incorporates a small quiz after each lesson, ensuring you retain most of the information. Having great utility, those are divided into two groups. The first tests your knowledge of the presented in the lesson's material, while the second keeps you accountable for actually doing the work. 
As noted in my video on how to start practicing magic, you can enter such questions into apps like Anki and Quizlet and utilize the method of active recall. The method of warning. Regarded by the Ciceros as quote-unquote modern grimoire, modern magic doesn't aim to be the end all be all of all magical books. Instead, it is intended as a one-year course on magic, and after that period, a total beginner would be able to get any book on magic and understand how to use it. In mine and the views of hundreds of others, the author achieves that goal 100%. Modern magic makes sophisticated concepts readily comprehensive. That includes the divisions of the Tree of Five, such as the origins of symbols like the Ankh and Celtic crosses, the swastika and numerous others. It also comprises various notaricons, divine names and exciting details about the practices and their inventors. Like the Golden Dawn's knowledge lectures, modern magic structures its lessons based on the elemental grades and the Yodhei Vavhei formula, moving from earth to air, water and fire. Some of the content in those sections resembles Golden Dawn's, whereas other doesn't. It is very well clarified that these lessons cannot initiate you into any system. Instead, they provide essential information and familiarize you with the particular element. And this brings us to modern magic's fundamental techniques. Basic Rituals Abundant with wisdom to permeate the beginner's minds, Lessons 1-6 to six present the course's most essential techniques. The rituals include the relaxation, true meditation, solar adorations, tarot contemplation and hexagram split, lesser pentagram, middle pillar, rose cross, lesser hexagram, supreme invoking pentagram and the opening by watchtower. Also, Donald Michael Craig's own Identify, Objectify, Banish or IOB that is designed to erase unwanted aspects of your personality. Excessive banishing. One of the few things I dislike about modern magic is its enormous emphasis on banishing. Although introducing the lesser pentagram and hexagram rituals, it barely says anything about their invoking versions. On the other hand, more traditional golden donors and AA adepts use both versions right from the start, invoking in the morning and banishing in the evening. No fields of operation. Besides letting the student adore both aspects of divinity, that provides the tools for the different kinds of operation, invoking or empowering, banishing, centering and the more recently gaining popularity operant and Hermes fields. Regrettably, modern magic says nothing about any of them, mentioning the lesser invoking pentagram ritual only once in the section on SIRP or SERP. Through first-hand experience, I learned that knowing how and when to use each field of operation is nothing short of essential for practical magic. Later, I also found that similar perspectives are supported by magicians like Jeff Rhodes and Scott Stanwyck. Depending on the person, slightly favoring banishing might be somewhat reasonable. As a hardcore introvert, however, that mainly capsulated and isolated me from the external world. This doesn't mean detaching from reality, instead it felt like putting a glass barrier between me and the others while keeping my wife on hold or pause. The ancient proverb says, invoke often, inflame thyself with prayer. Modern magic rearranges that, turning it into, quote, do the LBRP with feeling, do it often and flame thyself with prayer, unquote. Not the best for introverts. If followed by periods of invocations, a similar scenario might be appropriate for short, Rather than advancing your practice with that, modern magic brings the rose cross right, which besides centering consciousness to Tiferet, produces its own encapsulating effects, making you unnoticeable to the outer world. Certainly having its application, the rose cross ritual likely isn't the one to incorporate if wanting to get your work recognized. On the contrary, the lectures on those rituals are very in-depth, easy to read and profoundly exciting. I simply cannot stress this enough. I also appreciate Craig's emphasis on visualization, presence and proper vibration. Now, some people might object that the middle pillar is an invocation and you call the four archangels with LBRP. My experience showed that this is not enough to counterbalance the excessive banishing. Hence, until getting to lesson 5 part 6, modern magic doesn't teach any actual invocation. Warning you to not become one of those believing LBRP is quote-unquote high-level magic in the same section, Modern Magic introduces SRP or the Supreme Invoking Creature of the Pentagram. Pages 179 and 180. Quote, I'm often amazed of the incompetence of people claiming to be ceremonial magicians. Many of those whom I have met seem to think that LBRP is the highest level of ritual magic. Then they wonder why pagans criticize them for their complicated rituals. The Supreme Invoking Creature of the Pentagram is a more powerful version of the Lesser Invoking Creature of the Pentagram. As you can guess, it can become the Supreme Banishing Creature of the Pentagram by using the banishing forms of the Pentagrams instead of the Invoking ones. 
However, the purpose of this ritual at this time in our work is to bring into our wives the forces of the elements. At this time, practice this ritual only in the morning. When doing this work at this time in the course, always follow it with LBRP. Do not perform the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram SERP in the evening. This is not because SRP or SERP is dangerous, but because it can be very invigorating and might cause you difficulty falling asleep. This is especially true if you are in the learning process and have not perfected the ritual. Unquote. Breaking the coherency. Several things baffle me whenever recalling this section. The first is that, as mentioned earlier, modern magic introduces the elements one by one, but rather than finishing that, it examines fire after incorporating SRP Malkut, which brings all four into your sphere of sensation. The second is that the only work with the other three before SRP is mindfulness exercises, mainly teaching the elements properties. Some of those exercises can be recognized from the Golden Dawn and Regardis books. Undoubtedly, this is fantastic for shifting your perception and understanding that the elements are so much more than their physical representations. On the other hand, such exercises do virtually nothing to exert actual magical power to use and deal with during your day. Therefore, unless you study and practice other material, as modern magic wisely recommends, you have no idea how each element works. For instance, staying naked to a burning fire really doesn't show you what invoking fire actually does and is capable of. Nevertheless, I'm not arguing with Craig. I'm only suggesting that becoming acquainted with the elements via actual rituals to back those great lessons up and completing all four might be a more optimal and reasonable strategy before utilizing SERP and opening by Watchtower. Also more appropriate might be to first get familiar with the names of the elemental tablets and set a declaration of intent, especially when using such rites. Modern magic defines the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram as a more powerful, lesser invoking ritual of the pentagram. I find this definition vague and incomplete to say the least. Lesser, greater and supreme. Although having some similarities, the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram has a purpose utterly different from that of the lesser invoking ritual of the pentagram. The lesser rituals are to set the space establishing one of the mentioned fields. The greater and supreme rituals are to attune that space to a specific force so you can conjure a spirit or use the energy in your day. It is not that much that the greater or supreme is better or more powerful than the lesser. It is more powerful, sure, yet its main difference is that it's specific or particular while the lesser is general. Oddly, modern magic says nothing about that, nor of the option to invoke zodiacal signs with the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram. In my humble opinion, the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram is exceedingly capable and versatile. Based on personal experience, previously stacking its Malkut version with the 5 equals 6 middle pillar daily, and now using the elemental frequently, you can do so much with it. Moreover, if hitting it daily, you can even set the proper environment for what Dr. Christopher Hart defines as undoing yourself. The right simply offers so much that you may not believe it initially or perhaps get frightened and want to abandon it, especially if you don't have any prior experience with invocations, which was kind of what happened with me when I started using it at first. After taking a different approach, however, now I see the right as the single best tool a sole practitioner can use to grasp the ins and outs of each element. The more I use it, the more indispensable I find it. Supposedly, getting some understanding of what regarding meant when saying that the Enochian magic gives the magician a strong beating heart. Also, what Liam Thomas Christopher refers to in Kabbalah magic in the great work when defining Golden Dawn Enochian as the crowning jewel of the Golden Dawn system. Speaking of that, the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram is done by rending the veil or giving the LVX signs in between the spirit and the elemental pentagrams. While the Ciceros advocate using both in their Golden Dawn magic book, modern magic takes all that out, including the god forms given after each elemental pentagram. Presumably this is because the soul practitioner doesn't operate under an order. Yet, according to other sources, putting those signs there has a much greater purpose. They open the elemental universes while balancing the energy. Plus, modern magic does use the god forms and LVX signs for its soul adorations, keyword analysis and LBRH, living symbols. Symbols become living beings when you charge them in rituals. It may be a placebo, but deep within I always felt that rending the veil opens the channel for communication between the spirit and the elemental pentagrams that are further activated by their corresponding god forms.
Moving away from modern magic and including those in my SRP made a substantial difference and I don't think so practitioners should do different. In his magician's workbook Donald Tyson greatly emphasizes envisioning you open the very fabric of space when you render the veil and I believe you should meditate on that and use it. Now, modern magic provides a clear and concise explication of the supreme invoking creature of the pentagram. I appreciate that immensely. I merely don't enjoy the omission of some of its components and the absence of recognition of its incredible capabilities and versatility. Modern magic advises using Serp Malkut daily for now, yet it never brings it again, nor it does utilize it for elemental invocations. I find this strange and unjustified. Although some people may disagree, I believe that the regular, or better yet, daily usage of the supreme invoking creature of the pentagram, preferably without closing it with LBRP, but only with a Kabbalistic cross, might be the gateway to understanding how magic works, eradicating doubts and delusions. It might also lead to understanding some uncomfortable truths in a daunting, but fun and productive way, especially when considering some people's notion that angels know everything about you, including things you don't know about yourself. In the end, it will all be for your greater good, but as students we know that everything has its polarity. Proceeding with some yogic exercises, Chinese wisdom, more correspondences and finally, the fire element, modern magic introduces the right to use as a platform for all your practical workings, opening by a watchtower. Regarding it as a basis for grey magic, Donald Michael Craig considers the opening by a watchtower the equivalent of preparing for a scientific experiment. Not claiming to be an expert in the system, he explains that the Enochian language makes a right extremely powerful due to its incredible impact on the psyche. I wholeheartedly agree with that. He also mentions the story of Paul Foster Case creating his BOTA by removing the Enochian elements from the Golden Dawn system. Later, the same section teaches how to make the essentials for the opening by Watchtower. These are the four elemental tablets and the Great Tablet of Union. And that leads to a few more things I still have difficulties comprehending. The first is that Modern Magic skips bothering with the Golden Dawn's flashing hours, which are meant to work in conjunction with the Words of Power when performing rites. Furthermore, the book never mentions the actual elemental tablets with the Enochian language, colors and names. Instead it advocates making simplified tablets and black and white tablet of union. I always felt this unnecessarily simplifies the ceremony, diminishing its richness, authenticity and potency. But hey, you can still use the supreme invoking creature of the pentagram in different forms with invoking or operant fields and not need tablets. Some sources commence opening by watchtower with 4 plus 1 knocks or bell rings due to the four elements in spirit. Others omit that like regard this ceremonial magic which, like others, Donald Michael Craig regards as full of mistakes. Modern magic uses 1 and 2 knocks or bell rings before the preliminary banishing pentagram and hexagram rituals and 9 more before the actual ceremony. And after this section, the book gets into consecrating weapons proceeding to its second part, achieving success. To manifest something on the physical, you must first create it on the astral. After explaining that the unconscious is the most direct link to the astral plane, Donald Michael Craig reveals an important Kabbalistic secret. Page 246. The more emotionally involved you become with your goal, the greater your chances for rapid success. Unquote. The reason Craig explains is that the astral plane or the Yetzirotic world is related to emotions and therefore partially wanting something won't have the same success as the burning desire for it. I don't know about you, but this definitely reminds me of Napoleon Hill's emphasis on burning desire and Don Webb's definition of magic. Quote, magic is the art or science of causing change to occur in the microcosm, so a proportionate change will occur in the macrocosm depending on the passion and precision of the magician. Unquote. High and low magic. Besides the origins of witchcraft, in this lesson modern magic distinguishes high from low magic. Craig brings the notion that these definitions originated due to the different demographics in the past. High or art magic, he explains, are the systems of the urban people in the cities commonly built on higher grounds. Low or natural magic on the other hand are the methods of those who weren't living in the town but rather close to nature, usually doing farming and such. Flexibility and magical tools. Modern magic is abundant in explications on constructing your magical weapons, from materials to paint, the stores to get those from, and the process of putting them in use, crafting your tools. It also offers extensive ceremonies for consecrating each, and some enormous freedom to those not having access to or the time for all that.
Quote, don't let the inaccessibility of magical tools prevent you from doing rituals. Don't wait until you have that perfect air dagger to do a ritual. Use a butter knife or a fan. If you don't have a water chalice made of glass, get one of pewter or stainless steel or silver plate or wood or use a large seashell or use a paper or styrofoam cup. All magical tools are helpers. The magic is not in them, it is in you. As written before, magic isn't something you do, magic is something you are. Unquote. Amulets and talismans. Before providing techniques for charging such objects, modern magic reveals their difference. Page 253. Quote. Today, talismans are used to draw things toward you. Their purpose includes obtaining money, work, health or wealth. Amulets are used to keep things away. They protect from evil and bad work and help keep one from ill health. A talisman is any object, sacred or profane, with or without appropriate symbols, which had been charged or consecrated by appropriate means and made to serve a specific end. Unquote. Lesson 7 of Modern Magic provides a thorough explication of elements' practical uses. Also outline slow magic techniques for charging a talisman. While I appreciate that exoticness, I miss showing how to achieve such ends using SIRP. Later the book outlines principles governed by each Sephira and also proceeds with various systems for charging talismans including Austin Osman Spares, the Hermetic Rose Cross, etc. Surprisingly, modern magic says nothing about the most traditional way of working with planetary and sephirotic energies, the greater and supreme hexagram rituals. No hexagram formula. In lesson 8, Donald Michael Craig gives one of the best explications for figuring out planetary or magical hours as derived from the greater key of Solomon. According to the same chapter, no planets associate with Hokma and Keter. According to other books, including the Golden Dawn, you use Saturn or Sun hexagrams whenever working with those. There is a ceremony outlined for charging an object with a planetary or sephirotic energy. While that's pretty standard, it omits the actual hexagram ritual to invoke those forces, considering the planet's current place in the heavens. It is also done only within a banishing field, but maybe that's purposely simplified for the beginner. Sex magic. After elaborating on the origins of the grimoires, Goetia, and some spirit evocation techniques, modern magic recognizes several types of sex magic. Using the mind to control sexual energy, excitation, and orgasms, the first is thought control. Inner alchemy, or white sex magic, Craig explains, is an integral part of Taoist yoga and tantric sexual yoga. The third type uses sexual fluids to achieve a particular goal, and due to this, it is associated with Western alchemy. Unlike what most people think, modern magic reveals that sex magic does not always have its origins in the East. Kabbalah's inherent sexuality is a great example best displayed in the Tree of Wives polarities and the Tetragrammaton. Reich and the Orgon Clarifying what is to be orgasmically potent, i.e. to be capable of completely giving yourself to the experience without thinking, modern magic eloquently juxtaposes the thought free experience resulting from high quality sex to the actual goal of true meditation. One way to release orgone energy is by completely surrendering to your partner and being with them. However, this is not the only way and tantrics have methods for achieving that at will. The key technique in sex magic is entirely eliminating thinking, yet holding an idea in mind, especially when orgasming. Page 331. Quote, Whatever thought is in your mind at the point of orgasm goes directly into the unconscious and into the astral plane. It must manifest. This is why the thought held in the mind at the instant of orgasm must come into existence. But that is also the difficulty. To open up the unconscious we must be orgasmically potent. This means we must temporarily lose our sense of self, our ego. Unfortunately, that aspect of our being is locked up with our logical reasoning self. If we lose that, how we can keep an idea in our mind when having orgasms? Unquote. Sigils and sex. Fortunately, there are sigils to use. As we learn early on the path, the unconscious does not work with words but operates with symbols and images. So the key is creating a sigil and bringing that to your mind at the right time. Speaking of turning the ego off during sex reminds me of Crowley saying that during orgasms you have the amazing opportunity to become one with and change everything. Considering sex abuse engaging your partners in sex magic without letting them know, modern magic criticizes some approaches of Crowley. It advocates being perfectly transparent about your plans and intentions and even helping your partners prep by suggesting materials to study. The book stresses that the more versed all its participants are, the greater the magical power the working exerts. Apparently, this includes sex magic. Your own way.
Like many others, Modern Magic elaborates on how most people refuse to take responsibility for their thoughts and actions obediently following religious and cultural dogmas. Regarding it as the past, it explains that as a byproduct of the Piscean Age. It also suggests that specific individuals began to wake up doing their own thinking. Defining all practitioners of modern magic as such people, Craig explains that with the Aquarian Age. Oddly, he mentions nothing about the different eons, nor of the Limas notions of the true will, at least not in this section. But the same includes two wisdom gems that the more I practice, the more I appreciate. Quote, the ultimate magical wisdom cannot be communicated to you by any person or group. Unquote. Stressing the importance of seeking independently, Modern Magic explains that the so-called lost word or secret name of God can never be received by another person. Instead, that is obtained by utilizing magic and various techniques and there are three things to make any magic work. 1. The ability to raise control and direct magical energy. 2. The knowledge of what to do with this energy because ability does not equal knowledge. And 3. A positive attitude or self-assurance. Craig stresses that daily usage of the middle pillar, such as the banishing lesser pentagram and hexagram rituals, gets the job done unfolding secrets and truths of the mentioned kind. Whether or not that applies to you is something your practice will show. On the contrary, I firmly believe that opening yourself to the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram and the operant and invoking fields might show you so much, you likely won't believe it now. The same applies to the entire hexagram formula outlined in books Modern Magic recommends highly. Back that with the word from Modern Magic and you may experience this section second wisdom gem, obtaining what Craig calls advanced information and knowledge of magical secrets. Quote, this knowledge is not available on the physical plane of Earth. It can only be learned from entities on the higher planes. Unquote. These ultimate truths are subjective, personal, and thus vary for each person. An insight I value as a magical secret might not have the same significance for you and vice versa. How to discover those for you Craig reiterates is by starting the work now and doing it daily. After all this, modern magic concludes with some background on more modern systems like chaos magic and NLP and some FAQ. Final words. Although modern magic is a book I no longer use for practical and daily workings, I thoroughly enjoyed its lessons and Donald Michael Craig's eloquence and writing style. I also appreciate the author's efforts to make magic the foundation of your total self-development. This includes stressing the importance of taking care of your health with proper nutrition and exercise and using smart goals for everything, including your workings. Sure, there might be better and more accurate books with rituals. There are also different techniques, perspectives and approaches, yet often they are plain, unexciting and cumbersome. Lacking the ability to ignite the sparkle and make magic your culture and state of being. As Donald Michael Craig says, good occult authors do not speak only to your consciousness. They also do that to your unconscious mind and that is precisely what he does in Modern Magic. Igniting that sparkle from within and making you find your own path by seeking the proper techniques. For this Modern Magic remains indispensable as an introductory encyclopedia, especially to otherwise distracted millennials like me. The author states that modern magic is not the alpha and omega of magic, but it gives you the tools to discover your own alpha and omega. And I believe that description remains accurate. So, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel if into this type of content and perhaps to my other channel if into healthy living, natural bodybuilding, holistic nutrition and optimization. Also consider checking my books, music and blog. Thank you for your time.